somehow the plane was still flying. Seconds had passed, nearly a minute, and the plane flew on its own as if nothing had happened and he had to do something. Had to do something, but did not know what. Welcome back. I'm Miss Kelly, and we're reading the riveting book, Hatchet. I love this book. I love to see how this character develops, how he goes from this little kid just on his trip to see his father to having to be, you know, uh, a person making adult decisions about life and death. All right, and so today we're going to be talking about lesson two. And again, I, this is sixth grade ELA, and I also teach at Bark Falk and Cypress Point University Elementary. All right, so our objective today. Right now, it's lesson two, as I said. We're talking about the characterization of Brian. And the objective is, I want you to repeat after me, say, I will. Very good. I will continue to gather text evidence to describe the main character, Brian, by reading chapter two and making annotations on sticky notes. As you guys know, we've been using our annotations, our sticky notes. I love annotations. They make life so much easier when you're reviewing material. All right, so we have been reading Hatchet and using annotations to collect the evidence about Brian and how his character changes in the novel. By the way, I love this picture. This is somewhat of a good idea of the plane that he's on. He wasn't on like a commercial jetliner, you know what I mean, with full, you know, food service and the TV in the back of the seat. No, it was nothing like that. He was on a Cessna plane. It was a, almost like a bush plane. It's kind of like that. And guess what? He was the only passenger. Imagine how that is. And then again, as you know that he's going through all these different things, the noise is loud. It's not as comfortable as a passenger jetliner that you would normally travel on. But all of that sets the, the story and sets up the setting for us to help us understand this character and know what he's going through. All right, so today we will read Hatchet and continue gathering evidence about Brian using annotations. We will discuss how Brian reacts to events in the text. All right, so you're going to need a copy of Hatchet. You're going to need some sticky notes. It says 10, so just get a pack of sticky notes. And you're going to read your reading journal handout. I love this because this is a way to take your annotations and keep record of them so that, again, when you're writing your culminating writing task, your essay at the end of the unit, you'll have all this information already identified, laid out with details that helps make the writing easier for you. All right. So let's talk or, or we go back to our last lesson. We talked about an adjective that would describe Brian. I said conflicted. What adjective would you choose to describe him? Would you say he's young? Would you say he's adventurous possibly? Would you say he's angry? Mm. All those could fit his personality. There are so many different ways you could describe him. So I want to hear, what did you say he was? Very good. Thank you for participating. All right, so now we're in chapter two. When we left off, the pilot had a heart attack. Oh my goodness, it was just terrible. He was still behind the wheel of the plane and he had this heart attack and Brian didn't know what to do. So it says, read chapter, read Hatchet chapter two with a partner and end with the paragraph that begins with, and he started crying with the screams. As you read, make annotations on your sticky notes when you notice something about Brian's words, thoughts, and actions. And so now what I'm gonna do is just kind of skip around. I'm gonna hit some high points for everybody, but you are expected to read this whole chapter on your own. But again, for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of skip around and hit the high points. All right. So let's begin. It says, it was a clear blue sky day with fluffy bits of clouds here and there. And he looked out the window for a moment, hoping to see something, a town of, or a village. But there was nothing. Remember, we talked about it. Was he flying over rural or urban areas? rule very good so he's not going to see a town right he's not it says just the green of the trees endless green and lakes scattered more and more thickly as the plane flew well 
I have to pause and also ask another question. What season do you think it was? If you see a lot of green trees, what do you think? We know it's not winter probably, right? Probably not. He did um, give us some more um, details about the lake. The lake wasn't frozen over. So we, again, we know it's not winter. Could possibly be fall, maybe, maybe summer, maybe the end of spring. We don't know, but we know it's not winter. All right. He was flying, but did not know where. Had no idea where he was going. He looked at the dashboard of the plane, studied the dials, and hoped to get some help. Hoped to find a compass. But it was all so confusing. A jumble of numbers and lights. One lighted display on the top center of the dashboard said the number 342. Another said, said to it next was 22. Down beneath there were dials with lines that seemed to indicate that the winds were doing, tipping, and moving, and one dial with a needle pointing to the number 70, which he thought, only thought, might be the altimeter. So again, he doesn't know what to do. He's looking at this dashboard with all these gadgets and, and things, but he doesn't know what any of it means. What do you think he's going to do next? What do you think he's going to attempt to do next? Let's see. Let's move on to page 18. It says, panic came then. He had been afraid, had been stopped with the terror of what was happening. But now panic came. And he began to scream into the microphone, scream over and over. Help! Somebody help me! I'm in this plane. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Started crying with the screams, crying and slamming his hands against the wheel of the plane, causing it to jerk down, then back up. But again, he heard nothing but the sound of his own sobs in the microphone, his own screams mocking him, coming back into his tears. Can you imagine what this character is feeling? He is so distressed. He's screaming for anybody to help him. Nobody's responding. He doesn't know what to do. He is completely, utterly afraid and panicked. Okay, let's move on to page 21. Let's see. It says nothing could help him now. An hour passed. He picked up the headset and tried again. It was, he knew, in the end, all he had, but there was no answer. He felt like a prisoner kept in a small cell that was hurling through the sky at what he thought to be 160 miles an hour, headed, he didn't know where, just set, headed somewhere until, there it was. Until what? Until he ran out of fuel. When the plane ran out of fuel, it would go down, period. Now we see this character coming to the realization that this plane is gonna go down. And more than likely, he may not survive. He's thinking about his own mortality at this moment. And it's just a lot for a little kid to have to process. All right, let's keep moving. It says, he would have to find a clearing as he went down. The problem was that he hadn't seen one clearing since they started flying over the forest. Some swamps, but they had trees scattered through them. No roads, no trails no clearings, just the lakes. And it came to him that he would have to use a lake for landing. If he went down in the trees, he was certain to die. The trees would tear the plane into pieces as it went into them. He would have to come down in a lake. No, on the edge of a lake. He would have to come down near the edge of a lake and try to slow the plane as much as possible just before he hit the water. Hmm, that sounds like something an experienced pilot would do, right? Again, this is just a kid. This is his first plane trip. I love how he's able to stop panicking for a moment and really think about, okay, you know, my life is about to end, but I have to have a plan. I got to figure this out. And he does that. He starts thinking about the best decision that he can make to survive. That's what you have to do in difficult decisions or in difficult times. You have to make decisions that help you have the best choice of survival. Okay, I'm getting ready to end this chapter with this. Over and over, 
his mind ran the picture of how it would go. The plane running out of gas, flying the plane onto the water, the crash from the pictures he'd seen on television. He tried to visualize it. He tried to be ready. But between the 17th and the 18th radio transmissions, without warning, the engine coughed, roared violently for a second, and died. There was sudden silence, cut only by the sound of the windmilling propeller and the wind past the cockpit. Ryan pushed the nose of the plane down and threw up. Oh my goodness. Why do you think he threw up? Why? You know, of all the things, why that? Could it be because he was so filled with fear and anguish that it just all went to his stomach? And sometimes you have these reactions when you're going through things like that. I mean, I've never been in a situation like that. I don't ever want to be, but I can only imagine the terror that is in his mind at that moment. Oh, my goodness. As I told you, this is a great book. I love how it just keeps you just hooked because you want to know what happens. Does he survive? How does he survive? What does he do? You have to keep reading to find out. But I hope you are making your annotations as I was reading parts of this book. You are to also make annotations as you read. All right, it says, why did the author choose to use the word jerked? So I'm going to read this passage and see what the author is trying to tell us. It says, when things settled again, he pulled at the mic cord once, let's see, he pulled at the mic cord once more and at last jerked the cord free. It took him another second or two to place the headset on his own head and position a small microphone tube in front of his mouth. He had seen the pilot use it, had seen him depress the switch at his belt. So Brian pushed the switch in and blew into the mic. So again, why did the author choose to use the word jerked? Hmm. Now we know this is as he's trying to, you know, figure out what to do with the plane as he's in the air. But when we think about the word jerk, that's a strong word, you know? So we know that it's similar to being pulled, right? I think it's important that Gary Paulson used the word jerk instead of pulled because it shows us how desperate Brian is. He's desperate, desperate for someone to hear him, desperate to keep this plane in air, desperate to live. And so when you're desperate, you don't just use a word like pull. Authors are very specific about the words they use and why they choose them. So that's what he did. He used a word that had a lot of meaning and energy behind it. It also shows us how upset and scared that Brian was. It's a strong word choice, and we do understand why the author used it. The next question says, what does depress mean? Hmm, depressed. Why did the author choose to use the word depressed? Now, I know what depressed means. When you're depressed, you're sad, right? You know, but that's not what the word is. It's depressed. And if you look at it in the context of the, the sentence it's in, it says he had seen the pilot use it, had seen him depress the switch at his belt. So Brian pushed the switch in and blew into the mic. So we know depressed means to push in. But why didn't the, the author just say he pushed in the button? He didn't say that. He said depressed. Depressed is a new word. It's not a word that we use a lot in this context, but it does mean, like we said, to push something in. The author probably used that word because it sounds more technical. And all this stuff is so foreign to Brian. Remember, he's got all these gadgets and these things going back and forth. He doesn't know what this is. He's just going by memory. And so by using that word, it helps us to understand the fact that this is foreign. And he still try to do the best he can because he's trying to survive. And so that's why the author used that word. All right. So now, your turn. Up to this point, we've read chapter one and chapter two. I want you to work with a partner and list five main events that have happened so far in Hatchet. Oh my goodness, there are so many things that I can think of. Let's talk about five. The very first one, if we do it in chronological order, would be you know him riding with his mother, right? On the way to the airport. That would be the first major event for me. 
uh, and that his mother gave him the hatchet. The second thing is we know that he's traveling to Canada to visit his father, and he's on a very small plane with one pilot. The third thing that's a good, a good event or a major event is that Brian gets lost in his thoughts. He's thinking about his parents' divorce and the secret that he knows about his mother. As we've read, he says that over and over again. So we know that's a major thing for this particular character. Number four, by far, the pilot's heart attack. Oh my goodness, he has a heart attack while he's flying the plane. He leaves Brian alone to figure out what to do. So that's four. A fifth one may be that Brian tries to fly the plane and is able to get the plane steady. He tries to use the radio, but he loses the signal. And remember at the end of chapter two, the engine coughed, it stopped. There was nothing but silence. And you know, he got a little sick and he threw up. So we know that he's getting ready to try to crash land the plane. Those are some of the major events that have happened just so far in the first two chapters. And guess what? It gets good. Once he, you know, um, why well, don't want to tell you? I can't tell you. You got to read the book. See, I'm so excited. I want to tell you everything, but I can't. You have to read the book and then we can discuss it. All right. So in your reading journal, we're on chapter two now. Chapter two is the second page of your reading journal. It's in your student materials. Go ahead and pull that out. We're going to look at it again. So here is where the questions are. And here's where you are to respond. Try to respond with as much detail as possible to help you when you do your essay at the end of the unit. Says first, how does Brian respond to the big events so far in the story? So we talked about them, right? Being with his mom, getting a hatchet, flying to Canada, pilot having a heart attack. We talked about all those things. How does he respond in each situation? Go back to your annotations and the things that you've highlighted and utilize that to fit those events, to match it. So you know what page number referenced what event that you said it was a major event. All right, the second one. How does Brian use prior knowledge to guide his decisions at the end of chapter two? Use evidence from the text to support your response. Something comes immediately to mind when we talked about the depressed portion of this, the story. He depressed the button because he saw the pilot doing it earlier. And that was in the story at the end of chapter two. And so we know that there was a way of him using prior knowledge. Next, pretend you are a journalist writing a newspaper article about Brian during the crash. How would you describe Brian in the article? What evidence in the text supports your description? Ooh. So, you know, newspaper reporters want to know everything. They want to know all the details. They want to know everything so they can tell their readers and make it as though the readers are there. So if you are a reporter, what would you say? Hmm, let me think. What would I say? This is what I would say. I would say that Brian is faced with a terrifying situation. He was on his way to Canada when he encountered the, un un well, the unfortunate event of the pilot having a heart attack. He then tries to fly the plane without success and the plane ends up going down. That's what I would say. And if you want to know more about it, tune in to Channel 2 tomorrow for a live interview with the survivor of the plane crash. <laughs> so you can write whatever you want. Just pretend like you're a newspaper reporter and you're writing a story on Brian, what would you put in it? What would you include? What details would you say? What would make your readers want to read or come back for more? Hmm. Think about that as you write your information. You will write that in the little space here under chapter two. All right. So we're at the end of our lesson today. In this lesson, you learn more about Brian and how he reacts to events in the story. You also practice gathering evidence to track how a character develops in a literary text. I do have a question here. I have a question for you, a chapter two question. One of the things that you would have learned if you had read or when you read is that why or, or the fact that Brian was trying to land the plane in a lake. So here's my question. 
Why was Brian trying to land the plane in a lake? Why? The text told us. He said that he wanted to land it in a lake because if he landed it in the trees, they would shear off the plane and just damage it. He felt like he had a better chance of surviving if he landed in the lake. Keep that information because that may help you with your essay. Again, we want to talk about how his actions aided or hindered his survival. And that's a great question to go along with whatever stance you take on that question. I thank you for joining me today. It has been a great lesson. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.